Welcome back to AirVenture 2008 at Oshkosh, Wisconsin. Paul Plack here with Jim Wortham, who is with U.S. Fish and Wildlife. Jim, you have, you're standing in front of an amazing, relatively new model of airplane here. We want to get a little bit of idea why you're interested in it. Tell us, first of all, what you do. We are responsible for surveying migratory bird populations across the continent of North America. And so a lot of the critters that we're chasing, you know, are, are in the breeding grounds in northern Canada. And those same animals migrate through the United States, down through Mexico, and sometimes into South America. And so we're responsible for monitoring their populations, not only here, but in the other countries that they go across. And so it's a cooperative effort between all three countries as per treaty. And uh, we try to look after them and make sure their populations are healthy and available for the sportsmen. But what is, is it about a turboprop with this kind of carrying capacity that appeals to you for that mission? Well, we've, uh, we're a long-standing program, 50 years in, in, uh, in our history. And we started out with surplus aircraft from WW2 and uh, did quite well with the big metal airplanes that we were flying. They aged over time, and we had to transition into a, a more of a Cessna-based fleet from there. Those aircraft weren't big enough and capable enough to get it to some of the portions of the continent that we need to get to to monitor these bird populations. And so several years ago, we started looking around for replacement aircraft to tackle some of those issues we were dealing with logistically about carrying enough fuel to get places and then carrying enough people and equipment to do our job. And so we had to go to a turbine-equipped aircraft because avgas is just becoming more and more scarce in the northern latitudes. And so we, we started looking at turbine-equipped aircraft that were capable of amphibious configuration, and uh, we landed on Quest early on in the process. Aero TV is brought to you by... Today, there is an affordable, high-performance, easy-to-own, and easy-to-operate, very light jet designed with you in mind. Far less expensive than any other twin-engine jet to buy, it is also the least expensive to own and operate. It is the Eclipse 500, the jet that's easy to buy, easy to fly, and fun to own. The jet for you. And John, if you could tell us a little bit about the type of flying that you're looking forward to performing once the Kodiak with the amphibious floats comes online with the department. The uh, flying that I do is in some of the most uh, remote northern areas of the northeast, uh, up into Labrador and up into the Arctic and the Angava, Gava Bay and Hudson Bay. And one of the problems we have working up in that area is that there's very uh, little 100 low lead gas available for a recept type aircraft and with the turbine aircraft that's going to provide the opportunity to expand our surveys into uh, some of the areas that we traditionally have not been surveying. Uh, one of the things that uh, I found in, in the years that I've been flying up there is that when we land in, uh, in an area we have to pump 100 low lead gas into our recip aircraft. It usually takes about two hours to do that and uh, with an aircraft like this we could uh, pull right up to the pumps and and top it off. We're looking at urban reliability and we're looking how the rest of the industry is going and uh, this is a perfect point especially in the Arctic as you get beyond the tree line and get in the high Arctic most of you know the with the efficiency of turbines uh, the, the regional airlines and folks that need to buy fuel when they when they go out and back is turbine fuel is available when we do uh, surveys up there now for, with piston airplanes, we have to uh, expedite the, the drums in, and uh, so, so we see this as a, as a huge part of this whole decision, is that turbine fuel is becoming more available in remote areas than, than uh, Avgas. Aero TV is brought to you by Cirrus aircraft have always been easy to fly. Now they're easier than ever to buy. A complete line of ownership programs gives you everything you need to purchase, trade, finance, lease, insure, and warranty your Cirrus. There's even an ownership program for non-pilots. The Cirrus Access Pilot can teach you how to fly or fly the plane for you. Find out more at www.cirrusdesign.com. Cirrus, for the love of flying. It's typically two folks, sometimes three, uh, as crew and people may say why a 10 place airplane the rest of the load is in fuel and uh, it's, it's really exciting 
to have adequate, you know, to, to have enough useful load to do these lines in the way that they were intended to, to be done instead of sort of scabbing together from both ends and all this. When you're talking about tracking migratory patterns, things like that, will you actually be flying with the flocks in an aircraft like this? Not so much with the flocks. After the duck settle, we, we initiate the survey during the, the in May and June when at, at the peak of the nesting season. And uh, we, we think it's going to be an ideal sized aircraft for that. The other nice thing about the aircraft, it's a utility aircraft that we can we can use it to uh, do some long surveys. Uh, some of the areas up there, it's far and few in between of areas where we can get fuel. This is going to provide us the, uh, the endurance uh, to expand our surveys. The missions I'll be forming will be primarily in the northeast, although uh, I will be involved in some surveys when we get down into Mexico and Central America. So uh, pretty much uh, our surveys follow the migratory patterns of the birds, where they breed in the north, or are they winter in the uh, in the south? Uh, once we're on survey, uh, we're bush town to bush town. Some fishing lodges. There's some camping involved. It's 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 a it's a diverse survey, and and this airplane gives us the opportunity to do do more and better, and to provide the science. We we celebrated our our uh, uh, 50 year uh, anniversary just a few years ago. And we're thinking that this technology will take us the next 50 years into wildlife management.